Headlock, der Pro Wrestling Podcast. So, David, let's start with you. Um, I heard you have a, you had a quite successful amateur wrestling career there. I was, I was alright. Because <laughs> right. he didn't, because uh, he didn't wrestle women. That's right. Yeah, there was no, I didn't uh, wrestle. I didn't wrestle any didn't women in my amateur wrestling career. I never wrestled a girl. Of course, he'd uh, be successful. Dave, uh, Dave, my buddy, he wrestled a girl when we were in, uh, <laughs> we were in eighth grade. He wrestled this girl, and she didn't make weight. And you know how big Dave is. And she, this right. girl didn't make weight. Uh, and but they still put him on an exhibition. And then my one coach said to Dave, he was like, let's go. Uh, and this quick, all right? And he goes, all right. And he goes out there and just like gives her like a belly to belly <laughs> and pins her, pins her in like 10 seconds. And then she starts crying. <laughs> and he was just like, oh, what the? <laughs> like, and then everyone is so, oh, I never let him live that down. But yeah, I was successful because I never got to wrestle any girls. Um, I'm like, the crossover. Damn. Uh, yeah, no, I wrestled through, uh, from when I was like seven years old through college and everything. And uh, as my eligibility in college was coming to an end, because uh, it was such a major part of my life. I didn't know what I was going to do to fill that void. Uh, I'd always been a wrestling fan uh, from since I was five years old, and I saw Shawn Michaels come down on the zip line. Uh, and then kind of became more of a casual fan, but then mm -hmm. when CM Punk did his uh, pipe bomb promo, yeah. that totally sucked me all back in, uh, and then just became, fell in love with it all over again. Uh, sent out a bunch of emails to schools that were in Pennsylvania, and... Uh, the Wild Spoon Training Center, Sam in Hawaii, got back to me, and I went to start go training. Right. And then that's where that that's where that all started. <laughs> um, Shane, what about you? How did you uh, fell in love with wrestling and uh, got your athletic background there as well? Um, I was um, in high school. I uh, played basketball, uh, ran track. Uh, I tried baseball, but I didn't like it, so I kind of got out of it. And uh, but football was like my primary sport in high school. Real football or? Um, American, American football. American Real helmet. Football. <laughs> I'm sorry. This I'm German. This is real football. Yeah. <laughs> you um, say. <laughs> um, Madden. Real yeah, football. Yeah, Madden. Madden. <laughs> Madden. <laughs> um, Madden. So, um, after uh, high school, like I uh, went, I uh, actually had my senior year, I was um, uh, going into military. Because uh, my mother was uh, the recruiter, it was in the recruiting office, and she didn't force me to go. She just uh, suggested to me, like, "Hey, this is good to set up your future, and like, there's always a fallback plan if you want to continue college or you don't. You still have military." So I was like, "Okay." So um, after I graduated high school, two weeks later, I went into the military, and I did all my training for about seven months. I came back home, and I went back to uh, my fr uh, family friend. Home and I was staying in there, renting a room out for a little bit and working a job. And I was just wasn't like happy or satisfied with what was going on. So I just figured I'd like like be motivated enough to just go into pro wrestling because I, I was a fan of it since I was like 12. And uh, first um, real episode I started watching of SmackDown was SmackDown was like uh, 02 when Rey Mysterio debuted and uh, he wrestled Chavo. And uh, ever since then I just watched religiously after that. Yeah. And um, so Ray was Ray Mysterio was like the person that like motivated me and like inspired me to wrestle. Uh, so I end up um, leaving the job that I was at, and um, uh, my mother was living in Virginia at the time. I was in Pennsylvania, so I just called her, asked if I could move down there and start like getting start to start with wrestling training and started with a new job and start with um, school and stuff. So I packed all my stuff, moved down south. Um, And I uh, looked up uh, wrestling schools that were in the area in Richmond, Virginia. Grounds of Wrestling popped up. That was like four miles away from our house. So I was like, "Oh, okay, awesome, perfect." So I like um, called the called the school. They were had a sh they were having a show at the moment. So I came in that Tuesday and uh, signed up and started wrestling. Then my mom paid my first month's tuition for the school. All right. So you remember your first wrestling training? How does it feel? Yeah, I remember the first moment I stepped into a wrestling ring because. Uh, The way that WSW, which is <laughs> funny enough, uh, WWC4 actually, the way the Wild Samoans have their ring set up is they had a deal where you could lower the mat or raise the mat according to whatever venue you were in. So if the ceiling was really low, yeah. they would lower the mat so that you could still do like a suplex or whatever. Uh, they, that was pretty much the fanciest you got there. So. Um, <clears throat> When I got there, the ring was lowered, but the ropes were still at the same thing. Uh -huh. So 
when I got up to the ring, I went up to the apron, I went to go step in the ring, I had to like get on my tiptoes to get through the <laughs> second rope, and I remember thinking like, yeah, I'm not supposed to be doing this, I'm way too small for this. <laughs> that was my first moment I got into a ring, so I absolutely remember that. I was <laughs> discouraged instantaneously. <laughs> what about you? Um, the, that day, I, that Tuesday when I came into train, uh, I, I came into the train school and I signed a contract. Um, uh, I went in the ring. Uh, actually, I went on the floor of the mats and uh, practiced like how to put a headlock on, how to transition from headlock to hammerlock, how to this. And I just, those four basic holds, you know, of pro wrestling, you, I, was, I was just taught those. And then um, they saw like my feet. My feet work were pretty decent, yeah. and I, uh, I'm semi-athletic, so um, they so, got me in the semi-athletic. ring. Semi-athletic, semi. And, like <laughs> a lot of stuff I learned on trampolines. So <laughs> um, after that, they got me in the ring, and they um, uh, had me take my first uh, bumps. And um, they were like, "Oh wow, you don't have a fear of falling." So they were like, "All right, try a flip bump." Okay. I executed that pretty well. I tried this handstand bump. Okay, so they were just—I was kind of like knocking out the bumps pretty well. Yeah. And then they were like, "Okay, try like this, and then run and fall." And then so like I just picked up a lot of like um, natural things, a lot of things naturally. Yeah. Like um, very fast, and uh, so like they pretty much like started trying new things with me every time. And then I would go home and watch something. I watched every wrestling show that came on TV that week. So I was just watching like. Uh, Raw, SmackDown, uh, Superstars. I watched TNA. I watched like all of it, yeah. everything that came on. And then I was like, okay, I want to try this. I want to try this. Okay. I want to try that. I want to try that. And it just naturally happened. Okay. You see the difference there? I I felt discouraged. <laughs> I couldn't even be a pro wrestler. He's like, yeah, I was semi athletic and I was doing all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I got I got my well, bumps out. Yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah, he's got the it factor. <laughs> yeah, it's strange. It's obviously some people are like. Naturals in the ring and some some aren't. Oh, I got the in ring stuff actually pretty quickly. I was the um, okay. I was the fastest graduate in the history of the Wild Swan Training Center. I had my first match like after a month of training. All right, uh, which I was not ready for whatsoever, but uh, <laughs> but it ended up going okay. Uh, so then I just kept getting booked for him. But uh, as far as that very first moment getting in, I it was like, hmm? no, <laughs> probably shouldn't be doing this. This is uh this sucks. Because uh, it's, a, it's a big man's school, too. Yeah. So I was the one who got beat up. I got beat up all the time by everybody. Everyone's like, oh, I got to practice choke slams today. Pick the smallest guy there. <laughs> yeah, right. And I was coming right out of college wrestling, too. So I was still, my weight was still really down. Yeah. I was, still, I was only like 160, 165 pounds at the time. Yeah. Uh, which I don't know what that is in kilos. It's like 75 or something? 70? Cool. Something about that. Like, like the divided by 2.2, 2, right? Something yeah, like something like this. <laughs> Um, and you, you both got uh, uh, to ZCW eventually. He Pretty got me to ZCW. Yeah. yeah. You, you got him first, <laughs> yes. then you brought him in. Yes. Because there were no women to wrestle, so <laughs> I, <thought laughs> I figured there would be no, no problem there. I figured DJ would be like, hey, okay, I'm like, I'm a woman. Listen, bring him in. You yeah. can win some matches because you, uh, actually, I, even in CZW, I don't win matches. But, uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Shane brought me into CZW because uh, Shane was getting ready to wrestle Rich Swan at Cage of Death 14. And I was at, like Shane was saying, I was in school that was like right near nearby where Shane was staying. So I picked up Shane and picked up Swan in my car and we sat in traffic for like three, four hours or whatever. Do you remember oh, yeah, that? that terrible that traffic. Uh, so I was just sitting there listening to Rich and Shane talk about wrestling and stuff like that, which, you know, it's getting to hear Rich Swan talk about wrestling at all. It's extremely valuable to anybody. Uh, so I was fortunate enough to do that. We got to the school. Uh, I formally met DJ. I'd seen him here and there at some of the Samoan shows, but uh, Shane introduced me to DJ, and then I trained trained for the day, and then DJ told me to keep coming. Okay. And so Shane hooked me up with CZW, and then I did security for a little bit, and finally got booked. Okay. Um, how would you describe the, the experience of CZW wrestling there and uh, training there as well? I I had a I had a great time training at CZW, and, right. and I love wrestling at CZW. Uh, there's definitely times where you want to, uh, where it can be discouraging because you'll hear some reactions, like, because the crowd's very demanding. They want, mm -hmm. you know, they expect the best. And that's kind of how, like, the Philadelphia area is, which I'm very used to. Uh, but it can, it can get, it can get to you. But as long as you uh, believe in yourself and you stay confident and you know what you're doing, 
uh, eventually it, it works out. So there was a, a long period of time where, you know, even the CZW fans didn't necessarily uh, like me. And then, and then they did. And then, <laughs> for a while, they loved Shane. And then they just, for some whatever reason, they decided not to like Shane. And then Shane, like, took that and ran with it. Because, you know, if you're talented and you have the you ability, have to you're going to make, you're going to, you're going to make the best of everything you can. Yeah. Um, you just mentioned the crowd. It's a really rowdy crowd there. Yeah. And, and you also, there's a, a incident being, being called that there are some uh, anti-Semitism chant there. And I think you, you've been pretty, uh, yeah, you, you made your comment on that. So yeah. how, <laughs> how did that happen? Uh, I mean, you have idiots everywhere? Yeah, there's, there's idiots everywhere. <laughs> uh, there was just a group of fans actually for a while that uh, actually had started at our, the match that we had at the arena oh, yeah. in, at New Heights in July. Uh, fans started throwing change at me, and then I would, and then, uh, and obviously that was towards uh, my Judaism or whatever, and uh, and then it started with that, and then it was little things like they'd start saying just like really derogatory things about uh, me being Jewish, and and for the most part, I'd just be like, ah, oh, whatever, they're not worth it. Like, I don't, I don't care about them. Like, they're not worth my time. And then when I came here, uh, when I came to Germany and then I, I saw a concentration camp, uh, it kind of opened my eyes to, it changed who I was as a person entirely and the way I looked at on mm. life. And I decided I wasn't going to stand for that anymore. So when they did it, when I came back, they started throwing change me. So I just kind of put them in their place, <laughs> I guess. And then, uh, you know, they don't do that anymore. So that's good. But they're still terrible people. So this <laughs> <laughs> um, is also not only a lot of good wrestling, but also um, a lot of violence. And um, you've part just participated in uh, new DQ matches. You've been in um, ladder there. wars and other stuff. In glass. In glass? Yeah. You did a, gla a pain the glass match with Devin Moore. Why would you do something like this? Um, because um, <laughs> people wouldn't expect me to do it. Okay. I've always um had the, I've always like tried to change like people's perception of what they expect me to be. Yeah. The type of competitor they expect me to be. They um. They knew I was athletic, and I could hang with Rich Swan and AR Fox. I could do all that stuff. Then they, um, but they didn't expect me to be one of the people that could talk in the microphone. So I asked DJ A in the microphone. So I got cutting more promos. They didn't expect me to um, be a jerk of a heel to these people. Oh, so that's what I became. You know, they didn't expect me to main event. So I did that. You know, every time and like every time um, uh, they, every time there's always um, people draw draw an outline to what your career or what your title reign or what your um, direction should be in a company, you always have to flip it on them. Yeah. So it always has to be fresh in their mind. You always remain fresh. So that was something I wanted to do, especially with Devin Moore, who was someone who's done everything in CZW. I'm like, oh, wow, if I like beat him at his own game, what do you think they'll look at me as? I, they'll look at me as more. Yeah. So then that's um, the route I went with that. And uh, Pain the Glass wasn't so bad. I still got very many scars on me so, so to this day from that but um it wasn't anything i couldn't handle i, I was asking that um because um was the the, the feeling the thing you expected the, the uh, yeah. you expected was it yeah worse okay. or okay <laughs> it was, it was such a, a strange idea it was what i expected um okay. like i came from backyard wrestling and like i took light tubes this right here is from light tubes cars in the backyard and um so i uh, pretty much broke that fear Like before I even got into wrestling, All I right. had no fear of falling off of a ladder. I didn't had no fear of like going through like wood or whatever object. I didn't have a fear of getting cut yeah. and stuff. So I was like, okay, it's just that. Because But, you've been a backyard before. Yeah. Okay. Headlock, der Pro Wrestling Podcast.